Hello, welcome back. So, we're back with the uh, Nighthawk CV700SC uh, that we will be spending uh, some time tearing down, rebuilding, uh, and doing the full walkthrough. So, um, I have assorted the tools that we will be using for the first steps. We have a quarter inch ratchet, complements of Harbor Freight. Most of my tools are all Harbor Freight because they're cheap, and if I break them, it's only a few bucks. I haven't broken any yet. Uh, we have a 8 millimeter, short and long, 10, short and long, 12, 14, extensions, 14, 13, 12, and 10. So nothing too crazy. Most of the tools that I use for the engine, very simple stuff. Um, I did have to pick up a different... Allen key set, also Harbor Freight. I had to make sure I had all the right sizes. And then I got uh, a little lazy by having to crank and crank that. So I ended up buying one for the ratchet. So this way I can easily tear apart some stuff. But even with the rebuild, I didn't even end up using it. I still hand cranked with the old Allen, Allen keys. So what we will be doing is as I take part, bolts apart, I will be removing them and putting them here. That way we can organize them and uh, create a, a little system for making sure that the bolts don't get lost. Um, behind the camera that we will be showing later on, uh, I have an entire eight foot long table that will be used for each section of the teardown. So oil pan, clutch packs, alternator, starter, valve, Cover, cylinder head, cylinder, uppercase, lowercase, all torn down. All fits in an 8-foot long table, so nothing too crazy. So uh, first stop, after getting the gas tank off, um, if you don't know how to do that, there's a lot of videos, it's just two hoses, you're just loosening the clamp uh, for the vac vacuum and for the feed line. There's a bolt on top once you get your seat off, and then it just picks up and slides away. Um, nothing too crazy. I hit this thing off a lot of times. Gas tank, you might have to use some pliers to get the fuel line off, but other than that, it'll just slide, slide right off. So now that we have that, I already have the battery disconnected, so we will remove the spark plug boots. That way we have access up into here. We'll be removing this cover. So let's, there we go. So removing this cover, removing the bars, uh, Moving the yes, removing the throttle and return cables out of the way. That way we can get the valve cover off and begin camshaft removal, lifters, um, hydraulic tappets. Uh, I'll show you the right way to store those. That way the oil pressure inside remains. So we don't have to worry about flushing it and soaking it and you know drowning it in oil to refill those um, and also the best way to make sure that the chain um, is easy to be replaced and reinstalled. Um, timing for this engine, it, it takes some time, you know, pun intended, um, to get it just right. It's, it's easy to line it up, but with the chain, it just likes to pull it or you don't even get enough room to get the chain onto the gear. So I'll, uh, I'll show you the best ways to do that. We can get that going. Uh, covers are all easy to remove. Uh, everything was a quarter inch ratchet and just the regular size Allen keys for removing stuff. So let's go ahead, just pull the boots. Tuck those out of the way. Then on this side there is a ground um, for the bolts. There's a it's a ground strap. It is a 10 mil. So I actually just modified mine the other day, but we can easily just get these off. If you wanted to go faster, you could probably use a uh, an impact drill, but with the age of these bikes, 
I like to go by hand because that way I'm not risking stripping anything or causing any kind of problems down the road. For now, I'm removing the coil pack bolts, the cable. So there's two, you know, there we go. We got the two. The plug is next to the throttle. So it just uh, slides out. You can get the right grip. There we go. Pick this guy up. Set it out. And there we go. So now the coils are out. You want to check the actual coil case. Make sure there's no cracks, because if there's any cracks in the in the ceramic, that will definitely you know be causing any kind of misfire. Or if you're riding in the rain, you might go from four cylinders down to two cylinders. You can check the points for any kind of rust. Um, I cleaned all this up recently, so these are all nice and shiny. Let's see here. So let's get a better grip. So I just you know. 10 millimeter bolts for that for both both of them um you know we got positive negative cables going through here's the connector it's just a three prong uh there is a mod out there where it converts it from three it adds another one so that way there is uh power going through there as it uses one wire splitting splitting into two for the uh positive feed for the uh coils so we'll put this off to the side So then with that off, this bracket can be removed. This just slides up, pulls over. If you have a bike that's painted, it's definitely going to pull the paint off the valve cover. Let's put that off the side as well. Come back over here. So this is an interesting bracket. It is. 12 for the top and then you have 14 and 14 so well interesting how they used you know two different sizes but it's the uh, only bracket where they're actually using two different sizes but either way quarter inch ratchet get that going right off there change over to a 14 Nice little bracket. Now we have clearance on this side. Repeat the process on this side. There we go, nice and easy. Got both of those off. We'll move these into the same location as the coils, keeping everything together, keeping all the bolts together. Put those over there with the coil.
All right, so now we have the valve cover. Valve cover, pull this back out. Nice little handy dandy six mil. We're just gonna loosen all these. We're going to be uh, removing these in a nice little pattern that way we're not risking warping anything or causing any kind of problem with the torque. So nice and easy. There we go. All right. So, as this will be exposing the engine to air. Um, I won't remove this just yet, but I'll just explain the process. Uh, there's eight Allen head nuts on top, well, bolts on top. This will just be easily slid up, but the best way to do it is to strap up the cables. That way you have more room because it's going to come up. Obviously the cams are higher up, so I'm going to work on hiding the cables, that way we have some room, and we will take care of that. So we can get that off. So, nice and good. We got oil at the top, which means I had plenty of good oil pressure today when I had it running. There are only a few bolts on this bike that are, are hard to get all the way out using a tool, so this is very hands-on. cables. We're going to wrap tap those over to here to have them out of the way. Uh, one is the actual ground cable for the entire wiring harness. So that is an important one. This is green. So this is, you can make sure the uh, actual terminal is not rusted or corroded in any way. Uh, if it is, I would say clean it off with some sandpaper. Uh, but it's just regular, regular, you know, eyelet connector, so you can just cut it and put a new one on. As I added more accessories and modified the wiring, I did add additional ground cables to the bike. Um, so I have a heavier gauge wiring going up to the same point of that, uh, you know, the harness uh, ground wire, and then I have a wire running from that ground spot up to the uh, headlight fairing because there is no actual frame ground on the headlamp with some on the um, on the bracket for the headlamp. So we went, I went ahead and added one, and uh, it seemed to do a pretty good job. It uh, you know, definitely had a good contact with the accessories I have going on. I feel like I added too, uh, allowed too much voltage to go to the uh, LED uh, running light that I have. Uh, that was that video, in the first video, the light is kind of messed up and very dim. So 
I'm going to have to research that uh, assembly a little bit and see if I added too many bolts to it. Okay, so now that we have the buffer loosened up, probably is still good with the gasket. So we'll do a little side to side, side to side. Um, the buffer that I'm using is off of a California emissions version. Uh, my bike is not California emissions, so I added on a filter uh, to give it a little bit of a, you know, more interesting look. And yeah, it, fit, it fits with the gas tank, so we're all good. Let me go put this over the table. There are gaskets uh, where the bolts go into on the top, so make sure that they all, you collect all of them, because they will you know, roll around, and if your oil pressure is good, they will, you will leak oil. All right, so now we have the cams. Everything looks good, nice and fresh. So they got a lot of oil up in there though. Let's see, let me take this off. So everything's looking good. Um, so I will continue let the oil drain overnight. That way we can get that going to have a uh, cleaner, um, not as messy teardown. Uh, but I'll, we can take off the starter real quick since we're already here. We're gonna need this off anyways. So it's a 10 mil, top of the starter is a 10 mil. Just a regular nut, nice and easy. If you see that it's rusted or corroded at all, um, I added a heavier duty uh, cable as well for the starter. Um, your starter may be, well, it will be different. Uh, for the removal, as I put on a 7 mil bolt, but this is the regular 10 mil. The reason for this is I like how it was, uh, it's, obviously the thread was still the same, uh, but I gave, it gave a little bit of uh, a smaller profile for the, uh, for the rear bolt. So. Kind of blends in a little bit better with the uh, the bolts for the uh, you know clutch housing. So 10 mil. Wiggle a little bit because there is a gasket where it meets into the engine. There we go. So it does, you know, have oil that goes to it. Looks like the gasket was possibly bent or it just let a bunch through. I'm not sure, but we definitely have oil in there. So I'll have to uh, figure out the gasket, but it does have a gasket here. So maybe I have to add some sealant to it. Okay, that's a lot. So that's how we're doing the teardown because there was oil. So get this. Make sure that when you put it back on, or if this comes off, flange is outwards. So this uh, we took the gear. This does not spin. It only spins when power goes to it. To tell if your starter. Uh, chain is bad 
there's a gear inside of here, kind of where my finger's at. Um, I would put the phone up on my hands are probably oily. But there's a gear, it only spins in one direction. So you can only spin it towards the front of the engine. If it can spin in both directions, the chain is no longer attached and your alternator chain has failed. Broken, destroyed, whatever it may be. Mine, when it was destroyed, the we found out that the tensioner uh, snapped, causing it to go into the chain. Chain couldn't obviously could not handle a tensioner going into it, so that's why it broke the chain. So that is a very common issue for these uh, engines. So that's what we have going on over there. So we will uh, loosen up the. Uh, I'll get this open. We will loosen the cables so we can get these out of the way, get them off the carb. These are a 10 millimeter. So for the return line, which is the farthest one away, well, that's sorry, that's the middle one. The farthest one away is the, is the choke. So we have two different ones. I loosen the top. So I leave the bottom where it's at. I loosen the top and that way I can slide, push it down a little bit and slide it right out. So we have that for the front one which is the actual throttle cable uh, this one I just loosen the bottom just a smidge it's hard to get a wrench in there uh, because it, it is right next to the uh, valve cover or the cylinder assembly Get a little loose. Now we can spin this down. This is not this does not adjust. The throttle cable does not adjust at the carbs. Uh, if you have to adjust the throttle cable, that would be done at the handlebars. Uh, there's you know there's a adjustment cable up there. This is just to uh, you know it's just set at that specific height. So we can loosen the bottom. Not have to worry about that. Get this out of our way, tucked out of the way that we have more room for working on the cylinder or the uh, cams, lifters, oil control, all the, uh, the fun, in-depth parts that are uh, that are up here. Uh, this is we'll go in in a nice little process um, that we can make sure that no parts are lost, that we have the orientation proper. We can check the uh, the bolts, make sure that nothing is broken or, or loose or stretched um, and we can go over the, the tools all of this is all 10 millimeter everything was taken apart with a quarter inch ratchet um, when we get in there for the uh, actual tensioner for the uh, chain I'll see if I can move the camera angle a little bit better to uh, to allow to see that because it is a tricky one to get the tensioner pressed down so we will clean up real quick with this Overview of removing the coils and valve cover, uh, getting the engine prepped for a uh, further teardown. All right, stay tuned. Thanks for uh, taking.